makers of the largest selling household paper napkins in the world present Pride and Gruel. The honor of your presence is requested at the wedding of Miss Fanny Louise Pierce and Mr. James Dwight Blanton. Hello and welcome to Bride and Groom. Today we're going to meet a young man who popped the big question and then before he got an answer had to dash off to answer a fire alarm. We'll hear their very unusual love story in just a moment and then we've been invited to be guests at their wedding. The ceremony will be conducted by the Reverend John S. Wimbish of the Calvary Baptist Church of New York City. But I'd like to remind you that all this is brought to you by my good friends, Hudson Paper Napkins, used and preferred by more people than any other make, whether old-fashioned cloth or paper napkins. Let's see why. Oh, there's Mrs. James having a little mid-afternoon snack. Hmm. I wonder what she's looking at so intently. Why, why, it, it's me. It's our uh, bride and groom show. Hi, Mrs. James. Enjoying yourself? Fine, fine. Oh, what's the matter, Mrs. James? It's this paper napkin, Mr. Nelson. It's so coarse and irritating. And look, as usual, it tore. And you know, it doesn't clean at all. It just smears all over. Well, you're talking to the right man, Mrs. James. Here, here's a paper napkin that's soft as fine linen, yet so strong it'll last a whole meal without tearing. A Hudson table napkin. How about it, Mrs. James? Oh, I never dreamed a paper napkin could be so soft and absorbent. Well, they're wonderfully economical, too. Just take a look here. You can set a table with four fresh Hudson table napkins, and all four napkins cost you less than this carrot strip. Less than a penny. So for dinner tonight, get this pink and blue package that gives you not 40, not 60, but 80 big Hudson table napkins. That's Hudson, the world's number one napkin. <laughs> Now I'd like you to meet our very lovely bride. She's Miss Fanny Louise Pierce, her bridegroom, Mr. James Dwight Blanton. And of course, we want to hear a little bit about you before we hear this wonderful story. Louise? I'm 21 years old. I work for the American Red Cross in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. I'm what? 30 years old. I'm a city fireman from Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And he won't add it, but I will. He was the Golden Glove champion of 1947. I knew he's quite an athlete. And I also heard you had a little bit of service in the Navy there, too. Yes, I was aboard the USS Hollis flagship ball on the water demolition in the Pacific, which was named after Ralph Hollis, who a native of Georgia who was killed at Pearl Harbor. And oh. incidentally, the, the family of the Hollis and my former shipmates are watching today. Ah, oh, good. This will be a happy day for them as well as you and Louise. Tell us where this romance started, will you, Louise, please? It was in November 1950. My sister was in the hospital, and I visited oh. her frequently. And there was a very nice lady there. And I always stopped by to say hello to her. It was Mrs. Blannon. One night, she asked me to stop in and meet Dwight. Had you been briefed on this, Dwight? Yes, my mother told me she had a very nice cute girl she wanted me to meet, and uh, she introduced me, and I have to agree with her mother was right. I think your mother was very right. Yeah, well, What'd you do about it when you met Louise? I got a phone number, but I misplaced it at the fire station, and about an hour much later, I was cleaning out my locker, and I found it, and I called her. After all that time? We think maybe fate was watching after us, because a couple of days after I met Dwight, I left Atlanta for eight or nine months, mm -hmm. and the very day I returned is the day he called. <laughs> it sounds like you both might like each other quite a bit, because evidently you you did like each other when you got together, and we're looking forward to it. Did we, you, right? We sure did, uh, John. We uh, went to church on our first date, and we went to movies and picnics and parties, and we drove you quite regularly after that. Mm -hmm. and, and then what happened next? It was the uh, first of December. I went down to Alma, Georgia, to visit my mother. And while I was away, I missed Dwight, so I knew I was in love with him. Just that <laughs> short separation. How about you, Dwight? Well, that's the thing that kind of grew on me, John, and uh, from the start. And this weekend that Louise went home, I missed her so much, I knew I was in love with her. She called me, and she got back in town. I asked her to come by the station to see me. And I asked one of the fellows to watch out for me, and I went out and sat in the car with Louise, and I talked to her a while, and all of a sudden I said, Well, Louise, I never really told a girl I was in love with her before, and if I'm really in love with a girl, I want her to marry me, and I want you to marry me. You proposed to her just like that? <laughs> and what did you say, Louise? Well, I didn't have time to give him an answer then because he had to rush right off to the fire. The fire bell, bell sounded the way he went. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, did you suspect that uh, he was going to propose that night, Louise? No. Did you suspect you were going to propose it that night? I sure didn't. The thing just crept up for <laughs> Oh, my. Well, I'm sure your mother will be very happy to see that you two are, well, going to get together. You're going to marry the girl she liked from the very beginning. You yes, asked my mother and two brothers and four sisters are very fond of Louise. In fact, she fits in perfectly in her way. As a matter of fact, my mother, four brothers and five sisters, are very fond of Dwight, too. You're starting out with 17 people in your own family approving <laughs> this marriage, and I'm sure all the 
A couple of million watching Bride and Groom today approve also. It's a wonderful love story, and I know you'll all be very happy. And, and I'd like to meet your attendants, if I may, Louise. We'd want to hold things up any longer. Is everybody waiting? My sister's Mrs. Faber. How do you do? Moore. How do you do? I promise you, may marry old DePatrick. I'm happy, happy to know you. The best man, your custodian of these beautiful keepsake wedding rings, matching band that they are. The exquisite diamond band, of course, for Louise. The matching gold keepsake band, also very uh, beautifully designed. There's for our bridegroom. And your love song, Louise? Promise of our wedding day. Beautiful song. And now as our bride and groom, their attendants leave for the ceremony. Phil Hanna sings their love song. When I walk, I only walk with you. And when I talk, I talk of only you. Believe me, the little things will always be this way. I made the promise on our wedding day. When you smile, you only smile for me. And when you look, you look for only me. Paul said, the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Louise, Dwight, it gives me great joy to know that both of you are determined to build your marriage upon the precepts of God's inspired word, the Holy Bible, and that Christ Jesus will always be a welcomed guest at your home. Will you repeat after me? I, Dwight, I, Dwight, take thee, Louise, take thee, Louise, to be my wedded wife, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, till death do us part, till death do us part, according to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy order. And there too I plight thee my trust. And there too I plight thee my trust. Ah, Louise. Ah, Louise. Take thee, Dwight. Take thee, Dwight. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to obey. To love and to obey. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And thereto I give thee my troth. And thereto I give thee. With this ring, with this ring, I thee wear, I thee wear, and with all my worldly goods, and with all my worldly goods, I thee endow, I thee endow, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Do you, Louise, give this ring to Dwight as a token of your love for him? I do. Will you, Dwight? Take this ring as a token of Louise's love for you, and will you wear it as a pledge of your love for her? I will. For as much then as Louise and Dwight have covenanted together, according to the teachings of the scriptures, I, as a minister of the gospel, declare them husband and wife. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Let us pray. May the blessings of thy God wait upon thee and the sun of glory shine round about thy head. May the gates of plenty, honor, and happiness be always open to thee and thine. And finally, when length of years makes thee tired of earthly joys, may the curtain of death close gently around thy bed. May the angels of God take care that the expiring lamp of life 
shall not receive one rude blast to hasten its extinction. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified, risen, and soon coming Savior. Amen. What a perfect moment for Louise and Dwight to remember all their lives. They'll be back in service in just a moment with some wonderful gifts for them. And meanwhile, we'd like you to see the attractive table setting arranged by the editors of Family Circle, the magazine for housewives sold at your favorite grocery store. Beautiful place settings, aren't they? Now, I'd like you to examine them both closely because though they may look very much alike, there's a very important difference. Now, one is set with an expensive linen napkin, the other with a Hudson damask napkin. That's right, a Hudson damask napkin. Now, were you able to tell which is which? <laughs> well, this is the Hudson damask napkin. The paper napkin that looks and even feels so much like fine linen. And look how extra large it is, too. Real party size. And best of all, this lovely napkin is just about half as expensive as your other luxury napkins. So, for your next party, get the box of famous two-ply Hudson damask napkins. The paper napkin that looks and feels so much like fine linen. And here come our bride and groom. Congratulations to you, Dwight. Right. Uh, uh, it's a wonderful Thank service. You, What's the first gift, Phil? Well, first, there's beautiful Queen Bess silver. Of course, Queen Bess is fine in quality and appearance, and there will be 12 place settings. Not enough for all 17 <laughs> brothers and sisters, but at least enough to invite one family at a time. More silver for the bride. This beautiful silver tray from Ann Sheridan and John Lund stars of the Universal International Picture Steel Town add their congratulations to all of ours. And now for the bride, a two-piece set of matched Samsonite luggage, a ladies' wardrobe and train case in natural rawhide, and for the groom, a Samsonite journeyer. Now that you're all set for those vacations, you'll be sharing together. And from Hudson Makers, the world's number one napkin... A charming, traditional chafing dish designed by Carol Stapel, plus a full year's supply of each of the four wonderful Hudson napkins. Hudson rainbow napkins for colorful table settings. Hudson guest napkins for special occasions. Hudson damask napkins for your dressiest parties. And the famous Hudson table napkins for everyday economical use. All four Hudson paper napkins dress up your table and cut down your work. And in the kitchen department now, you're starting out with this magnificent new tap and gas range. It's the one with a window in the oven door, the divided top, and... Tappan's famous tell you set time and temperature control. You're going to love cooking on it, Louise, and Dwight, you're going to love what you've been getting there on that cooking. And, and finally, when you settle down to an after-dinner cozy evening at home, here's a Spartan television set with its 17-inch screen. It's in smart hand-rubbed mahogany veneer. As you requested, you'll find that Spartan's picture definition is perfect. Just one more gift from our sponsor, the maker of Hudson Napkins. And that's a kinescope. That means a talking motion picture of the whole program, your ceremony and all to keep for the rest of your lives. <laughs> But right now, let's talk about your first trip together, Louise and Dwight, for your honeymoon. For it, we're turning over to this beautiful two-tone 1952 Pontiac Catalina, the very prettiest car on, on, car on the road. And Dwight, you're going to be terribly impressed with Pontiac's great dual-range hydromatic. In it, you'll head north to historic Boston and the internationally famous Sheraton Plaza on Coffee Square. Manager Lloyd B. Carswell and his staff will provide service that more than measures up to the high standards set by all Sheraton chain hotels. Ah, oh, there's so much of interest to do and see. We know you'll love every minute of your stay. There's the famous merry-go-round bar in the Sheraton Plaza to visit, and luxurious dining and dancing in the Oval Room. Leisurely days, visiting historic landmarks in and around Boston, one of our country's interesting uh, cities, to make it a perfect honeymoon spot at the perfect, renowned Sheraton Plaza on Copley Square, the perfect place for a honeymoon. That's Congratulations right. to you again, Dwight. Thank, Thank you. you both for sharing your happiness with all of us. Good luck, and I'll be with you again in a moment for your reception. Tomorrow we're going to meet a young couple who think they're pretty lucky because their story has a happy ending. In the first place, they shouldn't have met, but they did. He should have kissed her, but he didn't.